she stands, just as Elminster promised. Mistra, goddess of the weave, mother of all magic. The old man wasn't lying. She's opened the summoning channel. Can't you feel it? Gail's right. The very air around the statue crackles with magic. It sets your teeth on edge. A stream of pure, undiluted weave. I only have to reach out, and it will carry me to Mistra, wherever she may be. Go on then, Gail. We'll be here waiting for you when you're finished. Time was I'd have given my right arm for a chance to speak with Mistra again. <laughs> the left one, too. Maybe a knee. Am I? You're right. I am a strong, capable wizard. And this is no more than a casual reunion with an ex-lover. My omnipotent, omniscient ex-lover. I always wonder what being nervous would feel like. I hate it. For a wizard to have the love of the goddess of magic herself it was intoxicating. An experience beyond expression. During my time locked away in Waterdeep, I prepared a quite comprehensive speech for her on the subject of our former relationship and the manner in which it ended. Alas, recent events have rendered the majority of it moot, so I'm gonna have to improvise. Unless you have any words of wisdom to impart before I go. The summoning channel Mistra has provided is one only I can enter. No matter how much I prefer not to face her alone. You'd make a fine three-dragon anti-player, you know? I think it's best I keep a cool head going into this. Approach it like a particularly high-risk round of three-dragon anti. I'll let Mistress show her flight, and then I can see how strong a chance we stand of winning the gambit. I'll only be gone for a matter of moments. The Outer Plains experience time quite differently to our own. Wait for me. Please. Waterdeep. You look well. As do you. But I assume we're not here solely to exchange compliments. So why am I here? You discovered what lies at the heart of the Absolute. The Crown of Causes. And you disobeyed my instruction. Why? Because you had no right to ask that of me. You cast me out. Remember? You were my lover, my chosen, yet still you know so little of me. The past cannot be undone with self-pity, nor can a future be forged. Only with the truth will you see the way ahead. The fragment of magic you tried to return to me was not of my creation. It was the Carsite Weave. 
It is a corrupted, half-born magic, wrought in the brief moment Karsus ascended to godhood. It hungers for power, just as he did, and it can never be sated. You unleashed something that would consume all magic in existence, and yet you thought only of preserving yourself. So that's what you're scared of. With the crown of Karsus reforged, I could take control of the Karsite Weave. You can no more control the Karsite Weave than a weather vane could control a storm. That it entered your body and consumed no more than your powers was a miracle. But we will not be granted another. The only reason the orb sleeps is because I have allowed it to feed on the true weave. A temporary measure, but one that will not be enough to save us. With each day that passes, the Elder Brain threatens to become a new kind of god. Its worshippers, a scourge of soulless illithids. If you will not use the orb to end this abomination, then you must find a way to separate Crown and host. When you've done this, you must surrender the crown of Karsus to me. A great ask indeed. You've given me much to think on, as you always did. So be it. Follow the needle of your own wisdom. We shall see how truly it leads you. Carsite weave. I had no idea. Do you realize what this means? The orb is no stray piece of ordinary magic. It is something entirely different. The nascent form of a new divine power. Of course, I couldn't control it. I was mortal. But once I reforge the crown, the power of a god will be mine to command. The orb will answer to me. Evil is a reductive term. Too often used to dismiss choices the Observer lacks the imagination to understand. Let me assure you, Karsai Weave has no more inherent evil to it than a, a child in the womb, or an axe half-forged on the blacksmith's anvil. It is a tool ready to be shaped by its wielder, by me. And you know me to be someone of reasonably sound moral judgment, don't you? to share the company of someone who sees things the same way I do. All we need to do is stay focused on the task at hand, defeating that elder brain. After that, you can leave the rest to me. Divine protection.